Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Patrick. Um, the first presentation for today is going to be Tom McDonald, Anxiety Spoken Word. Um, I've had requests for this, but honestly, um, I relate to this a lot. So without further ado, I wake up feeling panicked. My pills are in the cabinet. Takes all the strength I have to just ignore them as I pass it. Man, I hope this feeling passes soon. Been hellin' back, it's barely noon. I'm scared to go outside. Shit, I'm surprised I even left my room. You know, I used to have the same issues. Um, I would go get up out of bed, and I would go into the living room, and I would sit in my living room for just a few minutes, panic attack, and then I'd go back into my room. Um... It took everything that I had to get out of my house, to get out of my apartment, to go scavenge, to do what I needed to do to survive. So I get it. And it feels like no one understands how bad I'd love to join my friends. It's hard to breathe. I'm anxious and I'll end up staying home instead. The doctor hasn't helped me much. He signs his name. I buy the drugs. I'm feeling weird. I take one out. It makes me feel comfortably numb. How many of us have been on a medicine regimen that just made us feel like a zombie? I get it. Um... I've had to change my med medical regimen many times, um, up doses, down doses. Uh, so it's a struggle to find the right balance. And you start to wonder if you even need it. And yeah. Man, I can't handle my emotions like I used to. It's all different now. I start to sweat. I feel confused. My fingers shake. My heartbeat pounds. And I'm feeling claustrophobic every time the closet closes because my skeletons are in there, so I have to leave it open. I'm just nervous over nothing, even shit I can't control. I used to love to be in public. Now I'd rather be alone. Talking about his skeletons for a second, um, I think a lot of the reason that I'm doing this is to clean out that, that skeletal closet and just keep it out there so that I can, not so I can dwell on it, but so I don't dwell on it, so that I don't let it linger in my head as to all the shit that I've dealt with and seen. Um, when I started doing immersion therapy, I would go to Walmart and I would go shopping like normal until I had an anxiety attack or a panic attack, and then I'd go outside. Um, and I got to the point where I could do two or three anxiety attacks before I had to go outside. And now, um, unless I'm in there for a prolonged period of time, or I'm in there with someone who is taking an extended amount of time, I can actually manage to finish an entire shopping trip at Walmart, but it's taken me years to get there. And even though it's difficult, it's probably for the best. If I didn't make a change, I would have drank myself to death. Then I wake up feeling better than I did the day before. But then it hits me out of nowhere and almost knocks me to the floor. A heaviness, a readiness to get back into bed. A sadness that I can't explain, a cloud over my head. My deepest, darkest fears feel like they're filling up an ocean and I'm floating on the surface with no hope to keep me going. I've been down on myself. Everything starts to go well. You feel like you're accomplishing something, you're doing something, you're being productive, you're getting out there. And then it just takes that that one feeling that one moment maybe that one comment that one person it just takes one thing to knock you back down to where you were the hardest part about post life if you will is when you get knocked back down not reverting or resorting to those old habits that you did initially because it's very easy to go back to that comfort zone and it's very difficult to avoid that comfort zone that you've been familiar with for so long. Man, I forgot how to believe in me. I never asked for help, now I just struggle with it secretly. I wish that it was something I could sweep under the carpet trying to hide it all the time only makes the battle harder. Man, I lived a lot of moments that I probably should have cherished. 
Now they seem so far away from me. I'm angry and embarrassed. I can't even tell my parents. They don't need to keep on worrying. My mama and my papa don't deserve to have to bury me. I hope the pills I have will hold me over for a while. I'll keep searching for the strength to find my smile. What I've discovered is that when you live each moment in a way that you celebrate the accomplishments, however small, and learn from the negatives, it changes your perspective. Instead of dwelling on the negatives and dismissing or disregarding compliments, for instance, it changes your mindset. Focus more on your positive accomplishments. You know, even if it's, I woke up and made my bed, or I actually stayed in the living room for 10 minutes today. These are accomplishments to people. Don't knock it. Trust me. Be proud of yourself for the little things that you do today that you couldn't do yesterday. Be right back. Because of how short these are, I wanted to bring them to you. And this is Not Alone, also by Tom McDonald. Um, I kind of started with the heavier of the two because... We have all experienced anxiety attacks, but as with everything I try to bring to you, I want to give you uh, a positive ending. So we're going to go not alone, Tom McDonald, and without further ado, adieu, English Patrick. I'm walking out the darkness and I barely made it. Hope this reaches all the people who cannot escape it. I was just like you. I was young like you. I was trying to numb the pain I was afraid of facing. I was trying to run away from the hurt. I didn't know what I would do if living felt any worse. I tried the pills and the therapy and none of it worked. Right off the bat, um, yeah, when, when nothing works and I resorted to drugs and I was comfortably numb and then I was uncomfortably numb and I was alone and I was isolated and... I didn't care. I didn't realize how much danger I was in or putting myself in because I didn't care enough to pay attention to it. But I barely made it through. I made it through and I'm here. So there's that. And I live each day acknowledging that and knowing that I probably shouldn't have been here about five times over and I am. So it gives me the motivation and the courage to keep going. I know it kills, but I want you to know that you ain't the first. Your people can't relate if they ain't felt it themselves. It feels like everything they say when you complain doesn't help. You're sinking deeper every day. When you're awake, you're in hell. You think you changed along the way, but now it's too late to tell. It's like you were rolling with the thunder and fell. Because when the lightning started crashing, I guess you did as well. Your demons kicking down the door. They're never ringing the bell. They just keep tapping on the windows till they follow the sails. You know... The whole, the whole thing about your, your personal demons is that they are there to tear you down and belittle you and contribute to your own self-sabotage. Um, and if you've ever had friends like that, that are in real life, that want to constantly tear you down, you got to wonder what's going on with them that's causing them to be so destructive towards you and acknowledge that they are not healthy for you because they're not and neither are your demons I know you're feeling defeated, you try to keep it a secret, your weakness got you believing you need a doctor for treatment, but taking pills ain't convenient, so you keep looking for reasons to go and flush them down the drain and find the faith to keep breathing, you lay and look at the ceiling all night when you should be sleeping, but you've been needing even pieces of dreams and failed achievements. You know, that's true too. Um, I can't tell you how many times I started college, quit college, started college, quit college, started college, started a job and found a reason to leave or... Um, felt like, oh, somebody here doesn't like me, so I'm going to get fired. Or, you know, 
even now, I mean, I'm doing really well at my job. I'm very happy with the way things are going. I feel like I'm accomplishing something. And every once in a while, I get that linger in the back of my head that, you know, this isn't going to end well, blah, blah, blah. And I just immediately shut that thought down. And I, I think to myself, you know what, look, you ha are trying something new and accomplishing something different before you give up and walk away again. Just remember, you need this. This is your rebuilding. Be proud of it. You keep repeating the moments when you were beaten and broken and now you're bleeding emotion. You just want someone to hold you. Well, me too. Because I've been standing on the edge trying not to jump. I only say it so you know you aren't the only one. The only thing that killed the pain was smoking weed and getting drunk. Before I knew it, I had drank a case a day for 18 months. I was sleeping with a beer by my bed. Last call was all that I could hear in my head. I know there's too many of us drinking to try and forget. But who the fuck are we going to cheers if we drink till we're dead? There won't be anybody left to cheers. You know, and the same goes, the same goes for any substance. I mean, I was a meth addict and I was staying awake for five, six days at a time. I fell asleep next to a cactus one day, woke up 18 hours later, somebody had put a pillow between me and the cactus and a blanket over me. Can't make this shit up. Um, but when you're that exhausted that, yeah, you know. And, and who really, who, who was there, which of my friends was there supporting me, which of my friends was there looking out for me, which of these people that claim to care actually did. And at the end of the day, none of them, not a single one of them. I'll bet you it was the homeowner down the street or right out wherever, one of the homeowners that felt sorry for me had nothing to do with anybody that actually cared because nobody that I knew was around. Nobody. And when you finally get sober, you find the friendships are over because you don't have nothing in common. If you're not getting loaded, you call them brothers, you call them family, you call them your blessings. And now they call and you ignore the phone and that's called depression. They try to tell you your misery is not an excuse. And you just wish they could spend a day trying to walk in your shoes. Just know you're not alone. I feel the same way as you. It isn't you against the world because I'm fighting them too. It's like you're losing control until you drive right off the road And then when the vehicle rolls again You get thrown out the holes in it Then you notice your bones are broken And all of your clothes are wet Soaking with gasoline Light a smoke and explode with it Till the day that we're ghosts You'll never be on your own Cause I'll be standing in your corner Till you need me the most I was put on this planet To lift you up when you're low And you have done the same for me So I'll be keeping you close I love y'all Just like Tom and granted, he's got a much larger audience than I do, but it's because of those these two recordings that I just put out that I'm here. I mean, just understand that when someone tells you they love you and care about you, it can be the difference between that person waking up and not waking up and that's their choice not yours it's not a guilt trip to make you feel bad but just to let you know that the the impact that you can have on someone's life just by telling them you love them you may not even realize that you know you see them in the hallway or you see them at school or you see them at work or you see them wherever you are and you just walk by them and you can tell they're having a bad day and you go, hey, I get it. I love you. You're not alone. I care. Thanks for being here. I love you guys.